Our presenter is Dr. Belgin. Uh, please come to the podium. You have 15 minutes. So I'm going to continue to the theme from the previous panel, and I'm afraid I'm going to repeat some of the things, uh, but probably add some. Uh, so uh, the, the, the overall theme of my, uh, uh, my talk would be, uh, you know, some of the details of the persecution that his met is facing in, in Turkey. And uh, I chose this topic because uh, we at the Rethink Institute published a paper on this, uh, on this very topic with uh, uh, detailed, uh, you know, categories under the persecution. So that is, that paper is readily available on the web, you can always access. And uh, we, we keep updating it because the persecution is still going on. Um, as you know, since the outbreak of the corruption scandal in uh, December 2013, uh, Prime Minister and then President Erdogan uh, and his government uh, have been uh, targeting uh, the Gulen movement. And uh, the, the movement at the time, which uh, suddenly found itself on defensive, uh, has been vehemently uh, denying the allegations of uh, you know, uh, efforts or, or initiatives to topple the government or etc. that are advanced by the government circles. And they, uh, his met circles basically called them as baseless accusations to cover up the corruption charges that came out on that day. So while the, uh, the corruption cases were all thrown away, uh, thanks to some executive interventions to the judicial uh, system and the investigations, the attacks on his met continue in full force. And, uh, evolved into more uh, action than rhetoric uh, nowadays. So a special focus on the Hizmet movement uh, is warranted for two reasons. First, although the increasingly authoritarian AKP government is aversive to any form of dissent and has already produced many enemies and victims, uh, the attacks on the Hizmet movement per se have reached a level of obsession and uh, collective delirium that makes the case all the more worrying. Second, as you know, his MET movement is an international movement. It's a loosely connected network of individuals uh, around religious, educational, and humanitarian organizations. Uh, so, and, and it has a strong presence outside Turkey. And this fact, coupled with the, with the fact that government authorities now uh, trying to discredit the movement outside Turkey uh, gives the issue an international dimension. The, the relationship between the AKP government and the Hizmet movement in Turkey has been uh, an amity of amity and collaboration roughly until 2012. Uh, Hizmet supported the AKP initiatives of European uh, union limiting military influence in politics, expanding rights and freedoms. And uh, his met did give the, gave the support largely through its social, uh, through its media outlets such as Zaman and Samayu. And the relationship turned sour uh, in the following years after AKB leadership shifted from this uh, democratization uh, policy towards more uh, uh, consolidation of power centered around uh, its leader, Erdogan. So, coming to December 2013, uh, and uh, given the fact that his met media was neutral in standing throughout the Gezi Park protest, and the prep school debate that sprung up in November 2013, there was not much uh, sympathy left between the two, AKP and his met. 
So the rationale behind the decision and determination of Erdogan and the AKP government to launch an all-out war against the Izmet movement specifically is still debated. Uh, given the past collaboration and conservative credentials of the movement, this decision looked too risky to take right before the critical elections, even for a masterful politician that is Erdogan. But retroactively speaking, there were many reasons uh, for, uh, for this break. Uh, first and foremost is the ideological or ide ideational contradiction between the views of AKP and Hizmet. Now, AKP leadership had drawn from a political Islamist past, but they do largely appear to have abandoned this view in, in view of a more Muslim democracy prior to their uh, electoral victory in 2002. Uh, in the last years, however, political Islamist discourses resurfaced through in a rather, uh, though in a rather populist and watered down fashion, blended with neo Ottomanism. Hizmet, on the other hand, as you know, subscribed to a more moderate and at times quite progressive interpretation of Islam that is comfortable with ideas of democracy, human rights, and interfaith dialogue. So the recent ideological shift that of the AKP didn't leave any room to accommodate a view such as of Hizmet for ideological and practical political purposes. To the contrary, the ruling party and its leaders attempt to portray Hizmet as non-Islamic foreign led entity that needs to be outlawed and eliminated. So uh, when we listed uh, categories, uh, when we actually look at the details of the persecution, uh, it was uh, possible to uh, divide this into five distinct categories. And we have, in our paper, we have like hundreds of incidents and cases that fits into uh, one or two of these uh, categories. First is defamation. Uh, this includes hate speech, slander, libel, vilification by uh, public officials and pro-government media. And among the public officials, we include president, prime minister, uh, members of parliament, other cabinet ministers, and leading uh, party officials. Uh, the defamation targets his met movement, institutions, and individuals. Some of the examples, uh, especially, I would like to you know uh, point out to continuous coverage of his met in the media as a pawn of foreign powers, intelligence agencies, and Gulen himself as a foreign agent. So that is continuously, basically, repeated and covered uh, by the officials and by the media. Uh, second. Uh, a lot of conspiracies with regard to Hizmet. Plots, incrimination, other scare uh, tactics reported in me media, sometimes announced by the government, uh, which aim to instill fear in the movement and prepare the public for possible controversial actions. Uh, examples such as incrimination of Hizmet as a terrorist organization. Uh, as some of the speakers mentioned, Kim Sayokma was... Uh, declared as a terrorist organization. Uh, there are talks of planting arms and weapons in uh, his met institutions and schools. The other category is discrimination. That covers uh, denials of service, participation, human rights by public authorities to the people, institutions, organizations that are affiliated with the Hizmet movement. For example, banning Hizmet, Hizmet uh, media members from covering uh, official functions, uh, covering official visits, uh, etc. Uh, discrimination of individuals from his med schools, uh, canceling the public tenders, uh, contracts of the his med affiliated businessmen, uh, canceling again uh, the lease agreements with the, with the his med schools that are using the land which belong to uh, uh, government. The other category, uh, which is used uh, increasingly uh, fervent, and that includes blacklisting that attempts by public authorities to build lists of individuals and entities that are suspected to be related to the Hizmet movement. The list contains names of individuals uh, 
that are used to ostracize civil servants, disqualify applicants to civil service at state and public agencies. And uh, such lists also contain entities, including private businesses that support his med schools and institutions in Turkey. And they are used to deny public services and benefits. Lastly, a uh, uh, plethora of unlawful conducts, uh, a collection of unlawful conducts that are increasingly commonplace, especially after the presidential election in August 2014. There are unlawful orders, decrees that specifically target hizmet movement, actions by central as well as local government officials against, again, hizmet-related individuals and entities. Some examples are the arrest of journalists in December 14, uh, government control of uh, Bank Asia, uh, cancelling the license of Kim Sayokmo, cancelling lease agreements of his med schools, advocating school closing in other countries, and propagating discrimination and defamation against his med members outside Turkey. So, now what? Uh, as you can imagine, Hizmet in Turkey has been adversely uh, affected by all this, no doubt. Uh, Hizmet in Turkey is struggling. It lost its popularity due to continuous defamation propaganda, but it's still alive in Turkey. The human resources of the Hizmet movement have not been significantly affected, although people are increasingly demoralized. Uh, but the organizations and institutions are under constant uh, pressure. And uh, the organizational future of his in Turkey is pretty much depends on the outcome of the up upcoming elections. Uh, if, if AKP still keeps its absolute majority in the parliament, you would expect a continuation of these policies. If it changes, maybe some, some relaxation. Uh, as you know, he's met does not pronounce a partisan vision, and thus it has been engaging incumbent governments pos positively and constructively throughout its life of, of, of 40 years. This was the case before the AKP and with the AKP until recently. Despite encouragement from various circles, his met didn't build a political party and claims to be equidistant to all parties in Turkey. On the other hand, uh, despite its uh, uh, impartiality and non-partisanship, Hizmet has always been targeted by state and governments at various times. This uh, constant pressure uh, was due to the progressive discourse uh, that Hizmet subscribed to and promoted, which is independent of religious identity. Uh, Gulen, for example, is the first Islamic figure in Turkey that declared unconditional support for democratic process, while others at the same time were toying with the ideas of Islamic State or Caliphate. The recent clash between the AKP and Hizmet movement and the following persecution helped Hizmet to unload his pro-government burdens and uh, further crystallize his progressive discourse in line with democratic principles, basic rights, freedoms for all. This is uh, thus it uh, visibly parted with other Islamic communities in Turkey, which tend to engage politics still through religious identity only. And uh, most of these Islamic communities still sided with AKP today. Consequently, his met in Turkey reemerged as a progressive religious movement against injustice, authoritarianism, and oppression, much like religious left in the United States and liberation theology in Latin America. Both of these groups, which sprung up from religious communities, were condemned and alienated by establishment in communities at the outset. Uh, Hizmet is facing very similar challenges in the generally socially conservative circles in Turkey. The progressive nature of Hizmet has always been the center of attention outside Turkey. But Hizmet's transformation in Turkey, a Muslim country and its place of origin, will have significant consequences for the larger Muslim world. The appeal of political Islam is waning as the Muslim world increasingly sieged by radicalism and extremism. Hizmet's progressive discourse may provide a much needed framework 
for a constructive social as well as political engagement for the citizens of faith. Thank you.